Drikas Duplessis recently did an interview with Radio Raps and said that Hamzat Chemaev is 100% the fight he wants. Drikas said, we always knew between Rob and Hamzat, if there was going to be something exceptional that happens, there might be a change in the title fight. We have no clarity on that. But as a fan of the sport and as the middleweight champion of the world, that's a fight that gets me more excited. Taking somebody's O. I've beaten Strickland before, and I know I'll beat him again. Getting that Hamzat fight, that gets me excited. I think the whole world wants to see it. The fans ultimately pay to watch the fights, so the fight that the world thinks is the best next fight, that's what I want. So I think the Hamzat fight is 100% what I want. The UFC is going to do what they're going to do, but from a fan perspective, and from a fighter's perspective, I think Hamzat should get the next shot. Kamaru Usman says the BMF belt is not a real title. Usman calls it a hypothetical belt that was made because of him. No, put the BMF on the line. Like, guys, Every why time. are we talking about this like this is a real title? It's not. This was a hypothetical that was made up because of me. It was made up because of me. Let's not forget that. Elaborate. Talk to me. Myself, myself and Covington were supposed to fight MSG New York. The fight didn't happen. They needed a fight to headline that card. They needed something with some steam. It's MSG. You can't just put any fight card at MSG. You got to come correct when you go to MSG. So at that point, what's the hottest ticket out there? Guess it. Jorge. Game bread, Masvidal, the hottest thing smoking. And of course, you have Nate Diaz with his mystique that he always carries. It's Nate Diaz. Nate Diaz had already called out Masvidal after his previous fight where he said, eh, not too many gangsters doing it like him. And so Dana, Dana jumps on. How do we promote this fight? Let's create this. All right. They, it's called the baddest mother effer belt. Come on. Are you serious? That's why I started. Michael Venom Page is eyeing a fight against Shara Bullet. MVP also discusses his recent unanimous decision loss to Ian Gary and what his plans are going forward. Speaking to MMAfighting.com, MVP said, actually, I just forgot his name, which is terrible. Magomedov, he just fought, did the double spinning back fist knockout, and then he called out my boy Izzy. Mate, I'm at that weight right now. You don't even have to wait too long. That one there, I'll just take that straight away just for the fun of it. That's what I'm grappling at right now. So I'm in shape now, ready to go. So that's a good fight for me, I think. Just a nice stand-up fight for everybody just to come back to the game. And like I said, leave my boy Izzy alone. He's trying to get back to the belt, to the throne. So I'll take his place. I'd say it's been a prosperous year. I really have enjoyed the level up I have enjoyed, almost putting a stamp on where I knew I was. I know there is a big question mark over my head with regards to can I hang in the UFC? Is my talent level that of the UFC level? So it's been nice to not only get signed, but also tick that box off. Let everyone know that, oh yeah, now he is competitive at this level as well. The last one didn't go my way, but it was close and there's only a few alterations. And now I get to, again, express my martial arts skills in a different way, show the world, or keep shocking the world by doing a little something different. And then straight back to the next year. I want to be really, really aggressive in the cage. I've had a year when I had five fights in one year. That's the goal again. I want to be that kind of aggressive. Get a fight, put someone away, back at it, back at it, back at it straight away. I want to make noise, man. I said that as soon as I came in here. If it's a good fight, exciting fight, we can do it wherever. Let's go. Joaquin Buckley continues to call out Kamaru Usman. Buckley posted this to his Instagram. In the caption, he wrote, you needs to hear me out. He added Kamaru Usman. Come on, Usman, you ain't fooling nobody with these wrestling videos, man. We all know you ain't got no knees. That's why you got them thick ass on, because you ain't got no cartilage in your knees no more. So listen here. Ain't nobody else done called you out. Ain't nobody else waiting in line. It's just me, big fella. So look, man, do me one favor, man. Let me go ahead and get to work at the end of the year, all right? We're going to send you off with a nice retirement plan. We're going to get you off them knees. Because, yes, sir, man, you got to get off them knees, man. Right now, them knees are struggling. They are hurt. They are begging your to please retire, man. Get up out of here. Diego Lopez wants to fight Alexander Volkanovsky at UFC 312 in Sydney. In an interview with Ariel Hawani, Lopez said it was a good knockout, referring to Ilya Taporia versus Max Holloway. It was really impressive, but it was even more shocking just to see Max on the floor. It had never happened. I was really shocked by that. Max did a good job keeping the distance in the beginning of the fight, but I told my brother during the fight, if Ilya got in there, he could have the chance to knock him out. Going into the fight, I thought Max was going to win. I never thought that Ilya would knock him out. We were never promised a title shot going into this. We just agreed to be the backup, but we will for sure try to find our way to that title shot. Ilya mentioned on Saturday night that he wanted to take some time off. Also, the UFC mentioned that they're working on a date for Spain. While this is all going on, it would make the most sense for me to just fight Volk in Sydney for the interim title. Volk has already suggested this. I've already agreed to it. Let's just do it. 
Obviously, we feel that the fight with Volkanovski makes the most sense for us. It gets us on the title shot track, but if the UFC wants to give another offer in Mexico City, we have to talk as a team with the management and see what the options are here. I'm not really interested in fighting anybody but Volkanovski. It makes the most sense. If the UFC says we have to wait around for a title shot, then we'll wait. If we fight for the interim title or Volkanovski, that's a conversation we'll have to have with management. We know watching Ilya's fights that he's very forward moving and likes to create pressure. I also like to create pressure, and we both have very heavy hands. It would be a really good fight, and any one of us could drop at any moment because of that. Sean O'Malley plans to reclaim his title and then have a super fight against Ilya Teporia. God, can you guys imagine if I would've went out there and knocked out Marab, Ilya just knocked out Max, how big of a super fight that would've been? It's okay, I'm gonna get it back. We're gonna, we're gonna climb the ladder, climb back up. I want super fights, I want the biggest fights out there. And uh, we'll get that one, one of these days. God, so I got these this grill, and I kind of feel like a dark. <laughs> feels dumb. Rose Nama Yunez says she's looking to finish Aaron Blanchfield this weekend at UFC Edmonton. Yeah, this is my third fight of the year, so it's like, it's uh, you know, the nerves and excitement, but but it's a little bit easier when you just feel like you just were in a fight. You know what I mean? It's not so uh, intense, I guess. I think just knowing, it's just time doesn't wait for anybody. I'm getting older. I'm you know 32 now, and um, I just figure some stuff out you know got a lot of things figured out in my life and I'm very fortunate to be able to like have so much experience uh in my career but not just that but like experienced people behind me to help guide me and um and be able to still like my body's still in good condition too you know what I mean so I feel like I have like a lot going for me in that sense but I know that like the younger fighters they they tend to be very hungry and so so that is something that like is a challenge but it's like I don't know I, I think I've figured something out you know yeah I think like what sets her apart is her demeanor and her um I guess like her uh, she's like cold-blooded or something like that you know so she's a she has a very stoic demeanor um she, she's obviously a great grappler um and she's she's pretty well-rounded you know she's got some decent um like fundamentals in her striking but I'm definitely superior um in that department and I think everywhere in the fight you know especially when it comes to mixing it up and mixed martial arts <sighs> I've been really focusing this camp on getting a finish I really want to finish but you know if uh that's all up to God's plan and if that if that's what it if that's what happens it happens um I'm definitely gonna put these hands on her. And then when the you know opportunity presents itself, I'll punch her in the face, take her back, choke her out. Matt Brown explains why Ilya Teporia deserves to be fighter of the year over Alex Pajeda. On the fighter versus the writer, Matt said Alex didn't knock out three pound for pound greats. Ilya knocked out two pound for pound greats. As great as those guys were that Alex fought, they weren't Holloway or Volkanovski. I don't think anybody expected anybody on this planet to do what Ilya did. If Max and Volk had fought 170 pounder guys, I don't think they would have expected for both of them to get knocked out. As impressive as Alex was, this is one of those where it's too bad we can't have two fighter of the year awards because they both deserve it. You don't want to take a damn thing away from Alex. I don't think you can compare to that. I'm all on the Ilya train for fighter of the year. Again, I wish we could give something to Alex. What he did was remarkable, but it wasn't Max Holloway and Volkanovski. If Alex did that to John Jones, we'd be like, okay, you got it, buddy. That wasn't available to him. Alex beat the guys that were available. Ilya beat two of the best legends, career winners in the history of this sport, knocked them out. Max Holloway does not get knocked out. Nobody knocks out Max Holloway. You've got to give it to Ilya. That debate's pretty well settled. I think most people are going to be on that train. That was what I said leading into this fight. What Ilya's gonna have to do at some point is land that fight-changing shot. I knew he landed the fight-changing shot when he hurt Max. I thought for sure Max was going to come back though. I thought, okay, there's that fight-changing shot. It's really going to be Ilya beating up Max now for the next at least round or two, but Max is going to stick around. I was just so impressed with how Ilya took his time, placed his shots so well, just some of the best boxing we've seen in MMA. The way he strategizes everything so well, keeps himself in such a good position all the time. That's what makes Ilya so special. He's such a good boxer, but those other little things that funnel you into his boxing, that's some very high-level stuff right there. It really gets my blood pumping to watch. I think he's got a lock for fighter of the year this year. He's got a long reign ahead of him. He's still got a long way to go to be up there with George St. Pierre and Anderson Silva, but he's right on that path. Michael Bisping thinks a move to the lightweight division is a no-brainer for Max Holloway. Bisping says despite getting KO'd by Ilya Teporia, it is far from over for Max and believes with one or two wins at 155, Max will be fighting for the belt. 
Everyone loves Max Holloway. 145. The time is done. That ship has sailed. Move on. You're getting older. The weight cuts are tougher. You've had a couple of losses. You almost became the champion again. You looked incredible against Justin Gagey. You took his shots. You knocked him out cold. He's ranked number two or three at lightweight. Gagey is three. three. Holloway is five. Step into that. There's a lot of fun fights for him at 155 pounds. There's Dan Hooker. There's Poirier. There's Gagey. Charles Oliveira. Which, by the way, them three would all be rematches. Which is wild. Nuts. Which is wild. I'm a Sarukian. He fights Islam. There's nothing but big fights for him at 155 pounds. And given that he's ranked number five already, one, two fights... Max Holloway is trying to become a champion at 155 pounds. So it's far from over. It's not over for Max. He went out on his shield against Aporia. No shame. It is what it is. John Jones responded to Chuck Liddell's recent comments. Chuck had this to say on the Jackson podcast. John Jones is a really smart fighter. That's why I always said I would have been a mad matchup for him because I'm probably one of the few guys that he have a hard time dictating where I fought him. He would have had to fight me. He couldn't out-wrestle me. He couldn't take me down. John Jones? John Jones, no. He wouldn't have been able to take me down. He would have had to strike me. The Jackson podcast posted that clip to their Instagram. John left a comment with this gif laughing at Chuck. Rampage Jackson responded to John. He wrote, at John Jones, stop it. You know Chuck was that guy. Rampage also left a comment saying Chuck would have hurt John's feelings. If you disagree, let's fight about it. Justin Gaethje posted footage today going body shot for body shot in training and ended up getting dropped. He posted this to his Instagram story and wrote, you either smoke or get smoked. Finally got one for the good guys. That's going to wrap it up for the news. Thanks for watching. For daily MMA news and content, subscribe to Full Mount MMA and click the bell icon to be notified when we post videos. Here are the three top comments from last video. The first one says, Jamal Hill is so transparent. Everyone can see you picking Taporia for fighter of the year over Alex because you're salty, mate. The second one's from Jacob Action. It says, do we really have to listen to Hill? And the final one's from Bottle Coke. It says, LMAO, Hill's still coping his loss. Those were the three top comments from last video. If you want to be featured in the next one, all you have to do is comment down below. And if you missed yesterday's news, click the video on screen right now to get caught up.